attack there. There's something different kinds of birds everywhere. Kenny, one of the greatest things about this kind of fishing is that you really, even though it's fresh water, you really never know what you're going to catch. And oh my God, look at this, Kenny! Well, can you believe this? I've been telling you about these brim, and I should have brought my fly rod because if I would have had my fly rod today and topwater bugs, you saw another big brim like this hit. A brim on that. Hit that thing just a minute ago, didn't you? And I almost hooked one, and now down here in this corner. We did hook one, and he's he's just vicious. He has eaten this plug clean up, and not only did we happen to get him in the mouth, but we also snagged him yeah, yeah, yeah. in the top of the in the top of the head here. That's one thing about these rapalas is that they do have some hooks. One of the things that uh, that our gourmet likes to do. She considers this probably some of the finest eating, even better than the bass. And uh, you get yourself about three pounds of these fillets, my friends, and you've got you some fine eating. Go get them. Touch it in there. Nice bass for you, Mark. Oh, I want two pounders. So, oh, cut up on here. Here. We caught him twice, didn't we, here? Easy. You know, him a thumb. Okay. Let's pull back. Oh, hang on. Get down that. Don't set your rod in the water. You're going to lose him like we did that last time uh, in the no, ocean. No. Wouldn't that be cool? I'm going to take my hand with you. Kathy would be mad at us, wouldn't she, if we lost your rod? Yeah, I dipped her in there again, but we got a little two-pounder there, huh? It's about time they started to turn them on, ain't it? Yeah, I like it. We said, I'll take a hit on the way down. I just I thought I was in the weeds, but he was falling back. So it's a fish. Nice fish. I can't get him off the hook here without hands during this fish. If don't get big, we'll catch him again next time, huh? There you go, bye bye. Yeah, like it. Oh, there's one under it. I see, I see one underneath my lure. That's nice. We got some light now, too. Three. I see three under. Oh, let's get him in the boat. What are you using for bait there? Well, Kenny, I've got a seven inch rapala, and there are currently three bass that are buzz bombing my bait from underneath. But I, it just doesn't seem that there's anything I can do to get him to make him strike it. Well, I guess what I say, when they're hungry, they're hungry. When they're not, they're not. Yeah. You can lead a bass to a rapala. Big species of bird over there in the, in the brush. Big, fella. That's probably a herring, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, sure nice. Yeah, Mark, that's a beautiful bird. Maybe we can uh, get a little bit closer to him and he'll fly off for it. To see what he really looks like. I don't think it'd disturb it too much, would it? Oh, uh, no. He's heading for cover. Maybe he's a she. I can still see it up in there with the zoom. Beautiful. Look your little head out there. Yeah, I do have some blue on like the top of their neck, their head and their beak. Well, that sprite warm there in this green water. If that don't get a fish, I don't know what will. This 
look pretty neat, guys. Now this lake is just incredibly clear. It's got lots of different sections to it, Kenny, where some places are real shallow with some stumps and things that go right up next to the deep water. And we've had some pretty unstable weather these last couple of days, and I haven't been able to determine whether these fish are in deep water or in shallow water or just not feeding at the present time. Well, it's so clear. If you had a tuna tongue out here, you could see them all. Well, we could play Roland Martin and get our stepladder. And okay, yeah, let's do that. We've seen quite a few fish. You know, you can see them. They run right out of the boat. They're not concerned with us at all. Now we're going to fish this island out here in the middle of the fish. I guess this is where they got the gold. This is where they have lunch when we're digging, right? Is that bird top of these? He's saying, come on, fish. Come on, fish. This island, Kenny, is a rookery for the cow you get. Came to us from Argentina on cattle boats, landed in Jacksonville, Florida, they say, in about 1912. And it's one of those animals that's very cool. Oh. In fact, it's kind of taken over a lot of the area that it's not even supposed to be. And it's not on the endangered species list. And uh, it's probably here to stay. I'm just going to fish on here and quit all the bird watching. Got the young ones growing up. Is this a fishing video or is this the Audubon Society? We catch our fish if it's just a fishing video. Look at all those ducks and birds. What are you going to do with them all? Oh, wow, it is way. We've got the caretaker's house with the bird house. So they say he's the only old guy that lives on this lake. About the only guy within, probably lives within 10 miles here, wouldn't you say? <laughs> <laughs> Custom craft, do a good job in this kind of environment. Big fish. Now those are grim, aren't they? One little bass, one little grim. Yeah, they are. It's everywhere in this lake. Incredible. Unbelievably incredible. Sniglet. Hi, this is Mark Fleming. Welcome back to the show. We have fished our little butts off this morning. We've thrown three 18 inch ball games, and we still haven't found the fish. Now, we did catch a couple small bass, and we did get a couple brim. And Kenny's going to get his act together, and we're going to show you that big one in just a little bit. Mr. Ken, we'll be back this afternoon to catch some more. Some big ones now. Quest for a big fish. 
You have to keep trying. Yesterday afternoon, it rained all afternoon. Kenny and I fished. We caught five fish, but the thunder and lightning was pretty bad. And in fact, a couple times there, we were pretty concerned about getting off the lake. So the next day, we're going to throw white spinner baits to start off, some top water. And of course, Kenny's going to throw his worm. And uh, Ken's going to show you a big fish before the day's over for lunch. It's afternoon again, and there hasn't been any rain all day, and there's nothing quite like fishing a new lake. And this is a new lake for us, but we've heard that there were some nine-pounders taken out of here. Wish we could get one. Kenny Wetzel, our surfing expert, finds a way to use his unique balance no matter where he is. Here he is seen hanging ten on a dead tree. Five, Mark, five. Here we are, Kenny. This is what we've been looking for. We've got us some pretty nice bass here. We caught him on the top water here. He doesn't look like he's hooked real good, but he's putting up a great fight on this rapala. Oh, he's a good, he's a nice one. Yeah. These fish are all dark colored. And when they hit it, they hit it really pretty good, don't they? Oh, yeah. Nice like, bet. Look at this guy. Yeah, he's having fun here. We can unhook him quite painlessly. There we go, one more to go.
Kenny, what do you think about this South Carolina fishing? Well, that's why I thoroughly enjoy myself. This will get you up tonight. I just want to catch another one before we go. One's one for the road. Well, Kenny, I think it's about time you ought to thank the folks who've taken the patience to sit through your South Carolina bass fishing video. Ah, uh, pretty fish pack. Yeah, well, I thank you anyway. <laughs> You don't always get a chance to accomplish what you set out to. In a Ken Wetzel home video, you almost always do. Thank of course, you. It's, a, it's a matter of hard work and sheer determination. And having a, having a lot on the ball most of the time. But I do want you to know that it's been fun these last couple of days getting these big bass here in South Carolina. And before we lose our entire opportunity to say goodbye, for now, this is... Uh, your temporary pseudo Ken Wetzel host for this show, saying we'll catch you next time, right here on another Ken Wetzel home video. Well, wait, one more fish. 